Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Shape It Up Live show. And today we are talking about eating the wrong foods. Now, before you click off and think you know the answer to eating the wrong foods, stay with me because you might be surprised at what I have to tell you. So um, if anybody is on already, go ahead and click the like button or just let me know if you can hear me loud and clear because sometimes I don't know if anybody can hear me. <laughs> um, and also, I apologize if I'm coughing at some point. I am human, <laughs> but apparently, um, I think it's just allergies. Uh, if you live in New Jersey, there's a lot of pollen floating around. So um, sorry if I have a coughing fit in the middle. Hopefully not. <clears throat> So, again, today we are talking about eating the wrong foods. Um, if you have never met me before or if you're new to Shape It Up, my name is Nicole Simonin, and I am a personal trainer. I started Shape It Up oh, back in 2006, and um, uh, before that, I was a physical therapist assistant, and before that, I was a professional ballet dancer. And... Um, so I have been helping women for the past 13 years get fit and just kind of change their lives and keep the weight off. So what I provide is services to give you the tools that you need to succeed, not just for now, but for the long term. If you are interested in working with me, you can work with me in two ways. Um, I do online training. You can be online with me anywhere in the United States as long as you have an internet connection. Um, and an iPhone, you are good to go. Um, I do have in-person training also in lovely South Jersey. Um, I am full on the in-person right now, but if you're interested in doing some online training, you can go to shapeitupfitness.com and you can request a consult, a free consult, and we can just chit chat for about 10 minutes and figure out what your goals are and if you're a good fit. All right, so, um, <clears throat> We are going to get started on the topic today, which again, we're talking about eating the wrong foods. So you might be surprised because I am a personal trainer, but um, I don't really think there are any right or wrong foods. I do think there are better quality of foods, but I think in this day and age, it is really challenging unless you're growing your own food and, you know, if you're <coughs> eating meat, if you have your own... Um, way of getting meat, <laughs> raising your own cattle, raising your own chickens, you know, the food is processed. Uh, there's, it's really hard to get around it. <clears throat> so, um, but I feel that you can eat pretty much anything and still have a healthy fit body. Now there's a big butt coming soon, but you have to eat everything in moderation. Um, if you just ate everything that, you know, you desired or had Twinkies and Ho-Hos all day long, um, you're probably not going to reach your goals and you're going to feel really crappy because you're not getting good quality food. Um, it's like putting crappy gas in a you know Ferrari. You want to give that car the optimal fuel that you need so it can run well, right? <clears throat> so calories do count and the bottom line is, is if you overeat more than you're burning, unless you have some sort of medical issue or if your thyroid's off, you will lose weight. Um, so if, you, I'm sorry, if you overeat, you will gain weight. If you eat less than you're burning, you're going to lose weight. So, so the problem comes in when you really stop paying attention to your hunger and satiety signals or your signals aren't firing correctly. Because our food is so processed, there's a lot of things in food that are kind of messing with our hormones and, um, you know, they're not allowing our body to do what it's naturally supposed to do. <clears throat> so a little side note, back in 2010, a professor named Mark Hub, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, it's H-A-U-B, he was trying to prove a point to his class, and I believe he was like an English professor or something, so he wasn't like a fitness person, um, but he wanted to prove to his students that calories in versus calories out was true. So what Mr. Mark did was he ate every three hours, and what he ate were Twinkies, Oreos, and Doritos. And, but he kept his cal caloric intake under what he was burning. 
So, and guess what? <laughs> he lost weight. In two months, he lost 27 pounds. Now, do I recommend that you eat Twinkies, Oreos, and Doritos all day long? No, I do not. I think that the point of this is, is that if you search anywhere on the internet, there are so many different diets. There are so many different ways to do, basically, just decrease your calories. Um, I think everything is so hyped up, and if you really start kind of diving into what's available, um, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to figure out what should you eat and what shouldn't you eat. So unless you're really training for like a fitness competition or you're training for like an obstacle course or a marathon or something like that, for the average woman who just wants to lose some inches, lose some body fat, and feel good in their own skin, you can add in these wrong foods here and there and still not have a problem. <clears throat> so here's what the real issue is with eating these wrong foods. Society, society, society has definitely made it very clear that there are bad foods and there are good foods. Now, again, I am not negating that per se, but I'm just saying there are definitely better quality of foods, but it's not to say that you can't have, you know, cheese puffs every now and then. So that's what you want. Um, so obviously the more ideal foods are foods that contain one ingredient, which are is like chicken, apples, um, vegetables, you know, broccoli. They all have one ingredient. Fish. Did I say eggs? Eggs is another one. Um, healthy fats, you know, avocados, nuts. Now, that's an ideal situation. Again, like I said earlier, unless you're growing your own vegetables and everything, you don't really have that much control over what winds up on your table, per se. Um, <clears throat> Ideally, too, you can also do five or less ingredients, um, and that's also a good way to gauge that you're getting more quality food. Um, the buzzword that is around is clean eating. Um, it's kind of phasing out, I think, now, and it's more whole foods. But the thing when you say you're eating clean, a lot of times when you say that, that comes with a lot of emotion. And it comes up when you're not eating clean. So say you are eating the quote unquote wrong foods, then you start to feel bad. You start to feel guilty because you ate these foods that you had said you weren't going to. And then you start beating yourself up. That's not good either. Um, the other thing too is when you're trying to resist those wrong foods or those not clean foods or not whole foods, um, when you start resisting, that's really, that's, you know, you can only have so much willpower. Um, and it feels not really good. It feels pretty crappy. And when that happens and you can't hold out any longer and you cave because then now you're eating these forbidden foods, this vicious mental cycle starts going. Um, and that's not a good place to be in. Uh, I know I have been there. Uh, back in the day and it's very unsettling you feel very out of control and you just feel like there's something wrong with you um, so I really hear you on this and for the longest time I would dig my heels in because as a dancer a ballet dancer it was kind of ingrained in us that you literally just don't eat and then we would have our show, and then after the show, it was like we went out to eat, and you ate everything. You know, you ordered two appetizers, a main meal, <laughs> dessert, whatever, drinks, um, and you kind of went overboard. And then, you know, the following, would you would be back on that path where you just don't eat as much. Um, I don't recommend that path. Um, and uh, if you have, if you know me well, you may hear me talk about donuts or Cinnabon <laughs> rolls at some point. Um, donuts and Cinnabons, they are like my kryptonite, um, that and like cake, like vanilla cake. But, uh, you know, I'm much better now, but when you know, say your your thing is donuts and they're sitting in front of you and you just can't hold out anymore. A lot of times 
you just eat the you know a bunch of donuts so that's not healthy either it's it's better to kind of eat maybe one donut a day rather than eat six donuts in one shot right um, so the other thing too are certain foods do have a chemical response to our body um, the two big ones are can you guess flour and sugar <laughs> uh, which is in everything pretty much they are disrupting our hormonal balance, especially us women. Um, and a lot of the times they're disrupting our hunger and satiety signals from those hormones. Um, so what my recommendation is, is if you are just starting out on your weight loss goal or if you're struggling, ditch the flour and the sugar for about a month. And doesn't mean you can't have them ever again, but get rid of them for at least a month, see how you feel. Um, and then once you get where you want to be or after a month, slowly add them in and see what happens. Um, the biggest reasons why I suggest this is you are eliminating sugar and flour. You're hopefully going to kind of reset your hormones a little bit so you can get those signals that you're hungry and full. Um, your taste buds are also going to change. It's amazing how when you change your food, your palate and your taste actually change a lot. So once you get rid of that sugar, I don't know if it'll happen in a month for you, but um, you know, if you pull that out, you'll be amazed at how sweet things are and how um, just overly sweet everything is once you kind of take that out for a while. Um, <clears throat> The biggest thing about cutting out sugar and flour, and most of you probably, as soon as I said that, you probably freaked out and were like, I can't give up flour and sugar. Um, but when you do, be aware of what thoughts and emotions are coming up in your head when you get rid of that, because um, a lot of us are very attached to sugar and flour. And a lot of times I think we gravitate towards it when you're stressed, when you're um, bored, when you're having a good day, when you want to celebrate, those kind of things. And they're definitely more emotional eating. Um, so kind of understanding why you are mindlessly eating on flour and sugar and why you're grabbing those certain foods. Um, it's very eye-opening. So if you do cut out sugar and flour, get a notebook and write down what thoughts come to mind as you're going through that process. Um, so is it hard to cut out sugar and flour? Uh, yeah, very hard. Um, I am definitely a recovering carboholic. Back when I was dancing and I didn't know what I know now, um, my eating habits were not good. I would eat tons and tons of bread and I really don't even think I knew what protein was. Had no concept of that. <laughs> so, um, and it's taken me a while. Um, I, like I said, I'm very much a donut person. And um, when I, my husband used to bring home a lot of donuts, not just like a dozen, like a lot of my favorite donuts. And I swear to you, those donuts would call to me in another room and say, come eat me, come eat me. And um, now I'm at the point where pretty much you can put a donut in front of me and I can choose whether I want to eat that or not. I don't feel like the donut is in control of me and that I am in control of my choices of what I want to eat. Um, so how do you fit in the wrong types of food? Uh, if you are just starting out on your fat loss journey, um, say for instance, you're eating 20 Oreos a night. And what I would suggest is don't, you can go cold turkey. Some people are very good at that, but most people go cold turkey and then they wind up binging. But you can start off with instead of 20 Oreos, cut it down to 15 and do that for a week or even two, whatever you're comfortable with, and then cut it down you know, even more. So then 10 Oreo cookies and then keep cutting it down until maybe one a day is you're good with that. Um, <clears throat> uh, the other thing, I have my notes over here. Let's see. Um, oh, so <laughs> I was talking to you about how eating ideally one ingredient, like chicken and broccoli and all that stuff is ideal. Um, 
So back in the day when I was little, my father owned a convenience store. It's kind of like a, a Wawa is now, um, but we had video rentals and pizza and ice cream and all this other stuff. But um, he used to have Entenmann's uh, donuts and I would eat the Entenmann Popums. I think they're still around. I'm not sure. But so I used to eat them as a kid. And then many, many years later, I hadn't had them for a long time. I mean, I'm talking like in my 30s when I had learned about, you know, health and fitness and started eating better. Um, I went and for some reason I had them or they were at a party or something. And I ate one and it was the most disgusting thing I have ever eaten. It felt like I had fur and chemicals on my tongue. So your taste buds do change when you change your palate. So stick with it. Um, it may take some time. The things that you thought you liked, you may not like them in the future, which is kind of a good thing. Um, the other option you can do is to, like if you like burgers or um, cheese steaks or something like that, instead of having a regular size, get make like sliders, cut down your portion size. Um, and also if you're eating like, vegetables and meats, um, you know, that looks visually bigger, like you're eating more food than if you're eating a normal size portion of like a cheesesteak or a burger. So keep that in mind when you do smaller portions. Um, but that's a way to fit in the wrong foods is to do smaller portions of your favorite foods. Um, so I'm not debating that there's better food because, like I said, there are better quality of foods out there, um, but you can still lose inches and you can still keep your favorite foods in the picture, just maybe not as often as you are eating them now or do smaller portions of them. Um, so if you also have been following me for some time, you know that last year, I think it's almost been two years now, I have had a goal to do a fitness contest and that is still on the table. <laughs> I'm still working towards it. But one of the things that I wanted to do last year was to eat ice cream every night while I was on this fitness contest journey. And while I was on it, I was losing weight and I was eating ice cream every night. So there in itself, I mean, you can lose weight and still progress to your goals. Um, the reason why I stopped was because I was having digestive issues and found out I was lactose intolerant, so there went the ice cream. Um, so the bottom line is, is that yes, there are better quality of foods, but you can absolutely fit in those wrong type of foods, like your processed foods, and you can still keep progressing onto your goals, um, you know, as long as you're eating less than what you are burning. All right, so does anybody have any questions? Um, while I'm waiting for any questions, um, you can check out Shape It Up Fitness. So if you missed this video, if you're catching it on the rebroadcast or if you've missed another Shape It Up live video, we do, or I do, broadcast them every Wednesday at noon um, Eastern time. And if you miss one, you can definitely get on my email list. Um, you can go to shapeitupfitness.com and request uh, an ebook, and you'll get on the email list. Um, but you can um, also check out some of the older live videos, either in this Facebook feed or on YouTube or on Shape It Up Fitness. So, all right. So I do not see any questions coming in. Um, I see Kim is here and Diane is here and Vic is here and Vic did it for a month and a half and felt great and it was hard at first but then it became easy to do. Um, that's good. That's all good. All right. So I am going to wrap it up. If you do have any questions um, after this broadcast, you can feel free to put it in the comment section. Uh, I do go back and answer any questions you have or you can post it on the Facebook page as well. And join me next week on Wednesday at noon for the next Shape It Up live video. Oh, wait a second, we got somebody popping on. Suzanne, when you suggest eating a diet without sugar or flour, does that mean absolutely no sugar or flour? Yes, <laughs> um, that includes gluten-free. 
because they are still flowers. Anything that basically raises your blood sugar should be eliminated. And you're going to be surprised because there's a lot of toothpaste out there that have sugar in them. Ketchup has sugar in them. Spaghetti sauce has sugar in them. Um, there's lots and lots of sugar floating around. Uh, and before you ask about artificial sweeteners, I definitely think you shouldn't use those either. They kind of trigger the same response, even though they say they don't raise the blood sugar. I think it's the taste that kind of triggers that, um, you know, if you have a little bit of sugar, you're going to want more sugar. So that includes stevia. Splenda is in everything. If you look at your labels and you see um, sucralose with an L, that has Splenda in it. That is Splenda's original name. Um, if you see sucrose with no L, that's just table sugar. But yeah, so Suzanne, no sugar, no flour. Um, the other thing too is with fruit, if you're doing no sugar, no flour, I would eliminate fruit for the month too because it's sugar. So it's really about just kind of raising, keeping those blood sugar levels the same throughout the day and not spiking them up. And it's just for a month. And I do think fruit has, you know, good minerals and vitamins and everything. And I don't think you should not eat them. I just think we eat probably way too many than we should. You really should have just like one serving of fruit per day just because of sugar. Um, so Suzanne, let me know if that answered your question uh, completely. I know there's a slight delay on the videos. So like when I'm speaking and asking for questions, I know it sometimes it takes a while. Um, so I'm just going to give it another second. And if there's no other questions, we will wrap it up. And like I said, if you um, do have a question later on, you can always pop on to the Facebook um, on Shape It Up and ask. Um, also, while we're waiting, if you are liking the videos that I'm putting out, please let me know. Um, like the Shape It Up page and make sure you, you know, share it with a friend, whatever, you know, if you are enjoying the, uh, the information. Um, if you have a suggestion for a video, I know I posted a question a couple days ago um, for any topics, like any struggles that you're having, you know, feel free to send that to me as well. I am always open for suggestions and topics. All right, so I do not see any other questions coming in, so I'm going to wrap it up for today. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you next Wednesday at noon. Take care.